begin. Kum len in ablak gemara. We are up to the sechti yavambas that you zayin amad alav. We're actually up to the next perik. The next perik we already talked about previously. The first two mishnas are talking about the last of the the eras, which is an aishas ach shaloi haya ba'alamay. So Reuven was married to Leah, and he passed away childless. And then, after he died, a child, a brother was born. So she cannot, we say, an age is a wise brother. There's no midst of evil. Hence, she's forbidden to that brother in law, and she's totally free. Not only she doesn't need evil, she doesn't need chalitza, she is totally free. Rab Shimon says, if, for example, there was another brother, Shimon, who was around, and Shimon married her, and then this young boy, uh, the third brother, was born. And then Shimon died. According to Rab Shimon, this uh, this woman now, who originally was Reuben's wife, is no longer considered Reuben's wife. She now became Shimon's wife. And this brother was born while they were still married together, Shimon and this woman. So therefore, uh, Levi can marry this woman. The Chachamim say no, that this woman, even though she's now married to Shimon, still is considered Reuben's wife. And the Iser of an Ashes Ach Shlahaya Belama is still there. And therefore, she cannot marry Levi. And now that she cannot marry Levi, the other woman, the other wife of Shimon is called the Tsaras of, a, of an Erva. And, uh, and they're permitted. And then we said that if Shimon himself agrees or concedes that if this brother was born before Shimon married Reuben's wife, in other words, Reuben was married to a woman, he had a brother Shimon, Reuben died, and then Levi was born. And then Shimon married her since she was born. At the time that he was born, she was already also to this young boy, to this baby. So that Issa remains, even though Shimon married her later. And then Shimon died, there's um, an Issa for Reuben's original wife to marry Levi because the Issa, once the Issa is on her, it doesn't disappear. Okay, that's this Mishnah and the next Mishnah. So let's learn the Mishnah. It says the Mishnah, Kate said, what's an example of Aisha's Achim, the wife of her brother, Shalaha Yabai Lama, that didn't exist? Shnei Achim. There were two brothers. There were two brothers. There were two brothers, and one of them died. Let's say Reuben and Shimon. And Reuben died. And afterwards, a brother of Levi was born. So Levi was born after Reuben died. So this is the first example where everyone agrees. And then Shimon married this woman. Levi was already born after Reuben died. So the Easter between Levi and Reuben's wife is there, is manifest, it's a brother-in-law, it's a, it's a sister-in-law, and there's no midst of evil. Then Shimon married this woman, um, and then afterwards Shimon married, as Aishas Achim married Reuben's wife, then the mace, now Shimon died. Levi was around when Shimon married this woman. Is um, The question is, can Levi not marry this woman? Not? According to everybody, Harishayna Yotzas, our version of the mission is Harishayna. They might bring later another version. Harishayna, that means the wife of Reuben. The wife of Reuben cannot live with Levi because Levi was born after Reuben died. So he, she was, this is the wife of your brother. You weren't around when Reuben died. And therefore, the the other wife of Reuben, becomes now the Tsara of an Arab. Mishum Tsarasa, it's her Tsara. And therefore, they both are exempt from Yibum and Chalitza, and they go free. What about Osa Bamaimer? What about, let's say, Shimon went ahead, so Reuben died, and, um, and then Levi was born. Shimon went ahead and did a Maimer to Reuben. A Maimer we learned before was, Mehatayla, how do you marry a sister-in-law? Only through beer. And um, what you did was you gave her Kedushin, which Mahatrader doesn't mean anything when it comes to your sister-in-law. So it's only Midrabana that there's some connection now between this woman and Shimon. So what happens if us <coughs> and, and then he died? Um, in other words, Shimon gave her Kedushin, Reuven died, Shimon gave her Kedushin, but they never had a chance to um, cement that relationship. Then Shnia lets him learn Mr. Bebis. So now Shimon, Mahatoira never married Reuven's wife. Reuven's original wife is definitely also the lady who was born after Reuven died. But Reuven's original wife never married Shimon Mahatoira. So therefore, Shimon's other wife has a bit of Yibum. But Midrabanan, it's as if Shimon married her because Shimon made a minor. And therefore, Midrabanan, it looks like the other wife of Shimon is the Tsara 
is the co-wife of someone who's forbidden to Levi. So in that case, we say that, um, in that case, we say that Levi is, uh, what do you call it? Is totally, um, cannot marry um, Sh uh, Shimon's wife as well, because with Rabbanu looks like she's a co-wife. When Hatoya, she isn't. So therefore, you need Chalitza no Yibam. Says, those who have the version in our Mishnah that it's the first wife, first means Reuben's wife. I make a mistake. The one whose version of the Mishnah is still talking about Reuben's wife, but we call her Shnir because it's a second marriage. I make a mistake. The one who says that it's a Shain, I make a mistake. I mean, the one, the Reuben's wife, the first one who had to uh, look at the dinim of Yibum, because Shimon died many years later. Man the Tanish near the second wife was still referring to Reuben's wife, the one who's forbidden to Levi. Lemish Tam is not making a mistake. Why? Because my Shnir Shnir Lusui. What does Shnir mean? Shnir means Shnir Lusui. It's um, it's a second marriage. Milay Askinan says the Gemara. Aren't we talking about that? In other words, not second marriage. She is the second uh, wife of Shimon. Says Gemara. How do you know she's the second? And we're talking about Reuben's wife. Reuben Shimon was already married. Then he took on Reuben's wife. Says Gemara. How do you know? How do you know that Shimon's already married and took on Reuben's wife? Mila Askin, it could very well be the Yavim. It could also be including a case where Shimon first married Reuben's wife. He was young, and then he took on another wife. So why are you calling Reuben's wife the second wife of Shimon? Maybe he's, he's the first wife. Ellie, you know what Shnir means? Shnir ben Asuyan. It's her second marriage. So she's already married to Reuben, and now she's married to Shimon. Either way, Levi is forbidden to Reuben's wife. And, the, and Shimon's other wife is considered the co-wife of someone that is forbidden. Says the Gemara, where is it to say in Allah marry your brother-in-law if he wasn't around when your husband died? I'm going to cross as a Pasuk. It says, Ki yeshu, it starts off the whole, the, 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 the introducing the whole bits of Yibam, it starts off, Ki yeshu achim yachtum, the brothers are sitting together. So what do you mean together? What's what Yachta come and tell you? So, um, they were together in the world. They were, they were all living at the same time. Not somebody was born after Reuben passed away. Exempts or excludes a brother who wasn't around when Reuben died. Yachta, what does Yachta mean together? Which brothers? Remember, we learned before that it only applies to bro paternal brothers, not to maternal brothers. And why is that? Yachta miyuchodim benachla. And that what? Rashi says that, that they yarshin each other. So the brothers, the paternal brothers, yarshin each other. Um, and also, <clears throat> yeah, Prat, and, and also the Yao yarshin their father. Prat la aim, this excludes the brothers of the mother. Rabama, so that's how we know. It says Yachtu, they all yarshin each other, so it's paternal brothers. Rabama, Rabba says, paternal brothers. We learn that there is Here it says achim yachtov, and we learn that from Bnei Yaakov. It says also over there that you know that uh, all the brothers were were um, together. Because <clears throat> they said to Yosef, Shneim, uh, Shneim, uh, Osar achim Bnei Avinu, and there definitely they had different mothers, four mothers, but they all had the same father, Yaakov. So we see Achim means paternal brothers. Malahal me from the father, let me name from the mother, I'm coming up, let me name also the father. Says the Gemara, if you're going to learn, Achim, Achim, there are other places which says Achim. For example, the Leilid, Achim, Achim, by Arayiz, it says, Erva of your wife, the Erva of your brother's wife. And their brother, it does makes no difference if it's a paternal brother or maternal brother, his wife is forbidden to you. So how do you know to learn from the children of Yaakov that it means paternal brothers? Let's learn from Arayis, Eishas Achichet, maternal brothers. It says the Gemara, the wording is different. Don in Achim Achim. Here it says, Ki Yeshu Achim Achim Yachtov. says the word Achim. And by, uh, by Yeshu's brothers, it says, Shneim Asar Achim. So the same word. Over here, the Erva, it says, Achicha. Eishas, Ervas Eishas Achicha. Different word altogether. Different words, you don't make exactly shop. Says it's not true. My enough community, you think so, we're so pedantic. Uh, says it says in the Pasik. <clears throat> the Shova kind of kind returns after Tsara seven days to see what's going on. And let's say he saw that it spread in the walls of the house, and then it says Upa Hakoin and the comes. And he saw that it spread a week later. Um, so Zui, Shiva, Zui, Bia, you have the same laws by both, even though here it says the word of Shav, here it says the word of Ba, yet we make exactly shop. So we see the words don't be exactly the same. So they are not correct. There's no, there's no other words. It's not like you have a choice. 
to make two Xerah Shabbos, and one of them have the same word, one of them different words, and we said, you know, it makes no difference. It's not what's happening here. There's only one possibility there, so fine. If you only, if you have something which is similar, we learn from something that is similar. <clears throat> In other words, if you have a choice of Achim, Achim, or Achim, and Achicha, we will learn Achim, Achim. So we know it's paternal brothers. Says the Gemara, but there's another place where it says brothers. Also, we have the same expression. It says, We are brothers. So it says the same thing over there. And by Loit, Loit was a nephew of Avram Avinu. <clears throat> they weren't paternal brothers at all. Says the Gemara, So according to, and the question is, according to this, you should maybe the mitzvah Yibam should also apply to an ant, right? Because Loit says to Avram, We are brothers. Um, or Avram says, like, we are brothers, and and we were, really all he was was a nephew, which means that maybe when Torah says, Yeshu Achim Yachdo, it means that your uncle's wife, if, if, if the uncle passed away childless, that the, that the nephew should marry her. Follow that line. Same word. We are brothers. Avram says to him, like, this tablet makes sense. It makes sense more to learn from Yaakov than to learn from Loit. Why is that? It is extra. But the Havel and they could have just said, that your servants are 12, um, that are 12 servants, the children of, of our father. Why do you have to add the word brother? That's extra. The word Achim is extra. It's extra to teach you this. To Yibum, that is paternal brothers. So we have now two drushes to teach you that's paternal brothers. Either word Yachta who inherit each other, and from the word from um, Achim. Why do we need both? We need the word Achim. We also need Yachta. We also need Yachta. We also need Yachta. Achim. We only said Achim. How many have thought? Leil. If only said Achim, I would have thought. Let's learn Achva Achva the light. Let's learn from light that even an ant is a mitzvah of Yibum. There's nothing extra there. Remember, we need extra words. Lie. It's not correct. It is extra. Avram didn't have to say to Light, we are brothers. He was trying to say we're, we're close. We could have right your day. We're good friends. We see Achim instead, he wrote brothers. And they're not actually brothers, just in every family. It's extra. That's what we would have thought. So let's look like that the mitzvah of Yiba applies to an ant. Therefore, Kosh Rahman and Yachtav had to have the word Yachtav that they're all equal. That they all yashin together. From the, the all yashin together, <clears throat> which doesn't apply to light and to um, um they, they all share the same Yerusha together. Their father passed away, they share the same Yerusha. Light and Avram did not share the same Yerusha. Light Yashin from his father, which is Avram's brother. And Avram Yashin from his father. And even if Avram's late father would have died early, prematurely. And uh, and light therefore with Yashin's grandfather, but it's not light Yashin, it's his father Yashin, and he's is passing, and then it passes on to light. Mashayin and Avram is Yashin directly from Terach. So they're not sharing the same Yerusha. And that, by another hand, the brothers, paternal brothers, all share the same Yerusha. And um, that's why you need the word Yachda to tell you don't learn from light. So let's just say Yachda. I would have thought that, you know what? The only time you have a mitzvah yibam mir is that it's not only paternal brothers, but paternal and maternal. You need them both. Okay, true. Because by Yaakov Avinu, we see that um, <clears throat> so we would have thought you need both. Why would you think you need both? We would have thought, um, it will, the more explain in a minute why we would have thought you need both paternal and maternal. That's why we need the limit from Yaakov to tell you that we only have one father, Yaakov, four different mothers. So even if all we need is paternal fathers. Now, why would you have thought that it's Paternal and maternal, you need a special shavu to negate that. Sicha v'hamei hecha teisa. Why would you have thought? Yibum menachol tolach money. Yibum has to do with inheriting. The nachol mina av, and we know that inheriting goes by the father, the loyman, and after the mother. So why would you think that you need maternal brothers as well? Says the Gemara. Itzich we need it because salka datz. I mean, I would have thought. Hoyil v'chidushus. I would have thought since the whole thing is a chidush. The Kemishtari Erva Gabei. The whole idea, the whole idea of of Yivama, of Yibum is an unbelievable chiddush. You're not allowed to live with your sister law. Suddenly, not only you're allowed to, but there's a mitzvah. That's a phenomenal thing. So maybe I would have thought that it, when do you have that mitzvah? Only if you're so close. How are you so close? If you're paternal and maternal brothers. Uh, that you are so close that you are related to the to Reuben who passed away paternally and maternally. If you need a posse, you need Achim Achim to teach you from Bnei Yaakov that all you need is to share the same father. Now, 
We're going to have a big machlekes in the Gemara, whether there's a concept called Zika or not, which means, of course, according to the trader, the only time you're connected to your system is when you uh, have relations, marital, intimate relations. But um, the question is, as soon as Reuben died, is this, is his, are his wives already attached to the brothers? Or really there's no connection to the brothers? Is a machlekes the Gemara in the Dorim, the Mishnah Dorim, if, if uh, Reuben, let's say, it was Reuben and Shimon, Reuben passed, uh, Reuben, Shimon, Levi, whatever, Reuben passed away, childless. There's now a mitzvah for Shimon, like Shimon, Levi, to marry this woman. Can Shimon annul her vows? A husband can annul a wife's vows or if it impacts the relationship. Can Shimon annul her vows or not? There are three opinions of the Gemara. In one opinion, the Gemara says that Abeleza says 100% he can annul the vows because there is Zika. There's already an attachment, at least with the Rabbanon, between her and her future brother-in-law. And therefore, and the brother law and therefore they can annul the vows. Rabbi Yeshua says it depends. If there was, if there's only one brother in law in waiting, so it's as if they're already connected, and therefore he can annul the vows. If the two brothers in law are more, how do you know with which one he can she connect with? She's only connected to one. And since you don't know, therefore they're not connected. Rabbi Kiva says, even if there's only one brother in law, there's ain't Zika, there is no connection whatsoever. You know, there's a mitzvah, an obligation to marry her, but there's no connection yet, and therefore neither of them can annul the vows. So that's a three tonight. We have another machlek, and the Gemara is going to alert to this Rabbi Kiva. We have another machlek is coming up later. We let's say you have Reuben and Shivan and Levi, three brothers, and let's say um, Reuben married uh, a sister, uh, married a girl called Leah, and then um, and he died. So now um, um, uh, what do you call? Le Leia, <coughs> uh, what do you call it? Leia now is obligated to marry Shimon or Levi. And then one of them, Shimon or Levi, married, before they married uh, Reuben's wife, the sister of Reuben's wife. Not married, got engaged to the sister of Reuben's wife. Now, we tell, according to Reuben Mercedes, we tell Shimon, who got engaged to uh, Leia, uh, uh, sorry, to Rachel, Leia's wife, say to, her, to Shimon, don't marry her, because if you marry her, then now she, uh, Reuben's wife becomes the Achais Erva, and she'll be a free woman, and she won't have Yibum Chalitza, you just denied her the mitzvah. Don't marry yet her sister. First, go ahead, give Chalitza to Reuben's wife, and then go ahead and marry. In other words, um, um, uh, he holds that, uh, what do we call it? he holds that actually uh, Shimon cannot marry. Not only we encourage him to marry, he's not allowed to marry um, um, the other the sister. You know why he's not allowed to marry sister? Because it's the achois zukukasai. Since he's already attached to Reuben's wife, how can you consummate a marriage to her sister? You know, that have two sisters as a wife. Because he holds that there's already, midrabun, at least, an attachment between Reuben's uh, former wife and the brother Shimon. So Abhudim Seda believes in uh, what he called Yezik. And obviously, there's a chachami who argue, and they hold basic. So that's the, what you have to have in mind. That's what you're going to know. He holds the name of Rav. Shemedes Yavim. A Yavama, the Gemara always calls a Shemedes Yavim. Somebody's waiting in line for a brother-in-law. We call a Yavama. So this Yavama, Shemesa, what happens if she died? Reuben died. And then his wife is now a Shemedes Yavam, a Yavama, waiting, a prospect. And then she dies. Muta Be'ima, the brothers-in-law are allowed to marry Reuben's wife's mother. And why shouldn't they marry Reuben's wife? They're not connected to her at all. It's Reuben who is his mother, like not all of it. Shem is not, not related. Ah, but if you're going to say that as soon as Reuben dies, this, his wife is already connected to Shimon, with Rabban at least, he can no longer live with the mother-in-law because it's the, it's the mother-in-law of his wife. And even after she dies, it's the mother of his wife, you're not allowed to. So the fact that Rabbi Huna says you're allowed to live with the mother of means that as long as you didn't marry Reuben's wife, there's no connection. Ein zik. Alma, because somebody holds Ein zik, there's no connection between Reuben's wife and all the brothers in law until they actually do something about it. Says the Gemara, why you be so vague? Let Rabbi Huna come out straight away and say there's no zik in the name of Rav. 
Tell you more now. I mean, okay, that, would, that would be nebulous. You know why? How, I mean, I would have thought, you know what? It depends. I would have thought, you know, when we say that there's no attachment and there's two brothers, how do you know which one she's eventually going to end up with? So neither of them are considered attached. Honey, we would say the two brothers. I will be had, if there's only one brother, like Rabbi Shur's opinion, I told you, what happens if there's only uh, one brother? Then maybe Yeshika. Since she's inevitably that, inevitable that she's going to marry him. So therefore, they're already attached. And maybe he now will live with a mother. But that's why Rabbi Huna spelled out, you're allowed to live with a mother because no sick. Says the Gemara. So we'll name of, let's add another word. To be clear, he should say, there's no attachment. I feel bechad. Even one brother. Clear. And then we would know, automatically know that the mother was permitted. So he would again, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be so clear. Because he I mean, I would have thought, I feel I would have thought, um, <clears throat> that, uh, he, that, that you're telling me you're allowed to live with a mother. Why? Because you, you, you say there's no attachment between Shimon and Reuben's wife. So I would have thought in that case, Shimon can marry Reuben's wife's mother even while Reuben's wife is alive. Since you have no connection to Reuben's mother, to Reuben's wife yet, why can't you marry the mother? But we don't want you to. Why don't we want you to? Look, there's no attachment between you and Reuben's wife. Why can't? Because if you're gonna if you're gonna marry Reuben's wife's mother, you're gonna take away from Reuben's wife the ability to have the mitzvah of you. You robbed her from a mitzvah of Yibam because now she is, um, you're not allowed to live with her. You're not allowed to live with her because her, her mother is your wife. So we don't want you to take away um, <clears throat> his, uh, what do you call it? That mitzvah. Because I would have just said there's no zikah. I mean, I would have thought of Philip Machaim, even when his wife is alive, you can go ahead and marry a mother to Bashalon. Only la'cha misa, only in the case of when Ruben's wife died. In. But Mechaim, like Ruben's wife's still alive, we don't want you to marry the mother. I, there's no attachment to Ruben's wife. Should the not going to go ahead and just rob somebody from the midst of people. Tonight we learned, it says in the, the Mishnah, if a Yavama passed away, <clears throat> if, uh, if, if she, Ruben's wife, passed away, you're allowed to then marry his sister. Seems clearly from here. Yeah, even a husband, you know, if the wife passes away, you're allowed to marry a sister afterwards. But it says the Yvonne is allowed to marry a sister. So I would have thought, oh, it, it, it would have said a bigger kid is you're allowed to even marry a mother. Because uh, a mother, if you're married to a woman and she passes away, you're not allowed to live with her mother. But if her, she passes away, you are allowed to live with a sister. So if you're going to tell me by Yvonne that there was a, there was a, um, a, um, a um, it seems from here that, um, that, uh, that Yvonne, if she passed away, you're not allowed to live with the mother as if you were attached to her already, and therefore the mother becomes also forevermore. Akash and Ravuna says over here, you're only allowed a sister. Only a sister, the mother. So Akash and Ravuna says that you're allowed to live with the mother after she died. Who are you to feel about? The truth of the matter is, you're making an inference which is incorrect. You're allowed to live even with her mother because you were never attached to her personally, and they feel like the mother. So, how come? It says you're allowed to live with a sister. So I'll tell you why he says the idea the ton uh, because it says <clears throat> um, it says in the beginning each a, a, a Reuben is married to a woman each is amazing and she passed away you're allowed to then live with your wife's sister and there it's only his sister there by Reuben if his wife passed away you're not allowed to live with her mother afterwards because the trader says that is also forevermore. The Havali so that I said the east of a mother in law is also from the Torah makes no difference if your wife is still alive or not still alive, her mother's forbidden you forevermore. But a sister is permitted. Um because by it says in by a sister it says, Allah while she's alive, clearly in the passage. But after she passed away, a lot of the sisters. So in that case, it, it's only talking about the sisters. So when we talk about the brother-in-law, we still talk about the sister. But actually, makes no difference, sister and mother-in-law. She was never your wife, and therefore you can marry her. So that's what Huna argues. Okay, that's the view of Rabbi Huna in the name of Rabbi. Comes along with Rabbi Yehuda and says, and later on the moral says the name of Shmuel, Rabbi Yehuda says, Shemeres Yobam Shemesa, this Yobam who died, also, be, um, be, you're not allowed to. Shimon is not allowed to live with a mother like girl because he believes you're already connected to her. It's like your mother-in-law. Alma, so he holds. Yes, yeah, because he holds. Shmuel holds that there is a connection. Says so the same question. Just clear, spell it out. No, if he would have just said yes, Zika, I could have argued. I would have thought only if there's only one brother. So it's obvious that she's going to end up with him. But there were two brothers. We don't know where she's going to end up. Maybe there's no connection. I mean, I thought, honey, the you one brother. I two brothers. Ain't Zika. Says the Gemara, when when Rabbi Yechonah, when Rabbi Hudna Rabbanan 
are arguing in that case over there, I told you before, about, um, about you know, we tell the brother, don't marry the sister, you don't count with the sister because Ruben's wife is, and Ruben's wife passed away and then Shimon and Levi, three brothers. And then Levi goes ahead and gets engaged with, um, with um, let's say, Ruben's wife's sister. And we tell him, don't consummate it because you have a mitzvah, you're not allowed to live with her because she's a chayis kukasa. And that's talking about there were two brothers there. And the Rabban, and you know, he holds Yazika by two brothers. The Rabban say, ain't Zika. So we see the Rabban hold that, um, that the Rabbi Yudah said, hold that yes, Zika even by two brothers. So why would you think when Rabbi Yehuda, Amash, Rabbi Yehuda says that the Zika only meant limited to one brother? So the mother of Pligi with the whole argument of yes, Zika, ain't Zika, is between two brothers, Pligi. Eliyahu and Hachit, Gemara says, if Rabbi Yudah would have, been, would have just said there's Zika, I would, might have concluded that Hava Mina, I would have thought, Mechaim, okay, wow. Ruben's wife is alive. It's wrong to marry Ruben's wife's mother because it's a very weak. There's some kind of relation, but it's weak. If Ruben's wife passes away, then why shouldn't you marry the mother? I would have thought Pokola Zika. I would have thought that any connection there might have been there is gone, vanished. Kamash Milan Zika Poka. It just doesn't disappear. Once there's a connection, it just doesn't disappear like that. Once there's a connection between you and the mother-in-law. And that connection remains to the mother-in-law. Therefore, you cannot live together. That's why we have to spell it out. So, I could bring a proof. The same thing that we asked before, a question of the one who holds that ain't Zika, we use as a proof to say to the one who says, yes, Zika. I'll bring a proof. It says, if the sister-in-law passes away, you're not allowed to marry your sister. Why does that big you finish allowed to marry your mother? It's clear. You're not allowed to marry your mother because there's a Zika and the mother remains also forever. Only the sister of the mother doesn't approve that there's already a connection between you and, and the, and the Yuvam. And, and therefore your mother is forbidden. There's no proof. Who was in the Philobama? Really, he could have married the mother as well. Could have never, no proof of it. Maybe you can argue there's no connection and you could live with the mother. So why do we just say you can live with the sister after she died? The idea that the ratio, since we're talking about initially about the husband himself, and there it's only with the sister of his wife, not the mother's wife. It only applied to the sister. Not the mother. There's an even after you know, somebody's wife passes away, you're not allowed to live with the mother. So now, Miss Avon with the Chaysa, which mentioned his sister as well. Mostly, Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar asked the question. It says, what happens? So, Mishnah later on. What happens? Let's say if Shimon went ahead. Um, sorry, it's, it's an our Mishnah. What happens if he went ahead and he made a Maimon? Right. So Shimon went ahead and did, made some kind of connection to Ruben's wife. So now they're sort of connected. Umeis, and then Shimon dies. So now not only is Levi the brother who wasn't around when Reuben died cannot live with Reuben's wife, but the other woman's wife of Shimon becomes the co-wife of Atzara because with Rabbana they're connected already and therefore it's a bit. Sounds to me the only reason why they have a connection is because Shimon went ahead and did a mimer. If Shimon would not have done the mimer, then it would have been no connection and uh, and Levi would marry Shimon's wife. Doesn't that prove that there is no zika approved to Rabbana? So I think about, um, the only reason is the only reason why Shimon has a connection with Ruben's wife is because he gave a kedush. Sounds like Hola Alba if he would not have given a kedush, then Shimon then it's as if there's no connection whatsoever. And even though Ruben's wife is forbidden to Levi, but Shimon's wife is permitted to Levi. Shni and Nami Yibu that she can even marry Levi because there's no connection between Shimon and Ruben's wife. So we see clues from Ain Zika. It's the Maima that made the connection. Now, the Yamad Yazik, if you can argue that well, there's a connection automatically since Ruben dies, the connection of the brothers, Havel and Sodas, Ashes, Ochele, Balama, Yazik, the connection would have made her connected to Shimon, and then for Shimon's other wife would be the, the co wife of a woman that is forbidden to Levi. Um, but that's not really a question. You know why? Because who had deemed the same thing with the same outcome would have been Afagav the Loy of a even if Shimon would not have made the overture of giving her condition, it would be the same result because there's already a connection between Ruben's wife and Shimon, and therefore Shimon's other wife becomes the co wife of someone who's forbidden to Levi because Levi wasn't born yet when Ruben died, and therefore she's also forbidden. So, why does the mission talk about a case of a minor? Um, so, still, the din would be the same thing that what? That Shimon's other wife, the co wife, 
cannot go ahead and marry Levi because she's the co-wife of a Torah. On the other hand, she needs a chalitza because Mahatayra, this whole idea of Zika is only the Rabbana. Mahatayra, the ruler's wife, has no connection to Shimon. So therefore, Mahatayra is still a bond between Shimon's wife and the brother Levi. So therefore, but Yibam we don't want because look, she's a co-wife from the Rabbana, at least, of someone who's forbidden to Levi. So therefore, we do chalitza. So why does the Mishnah talk about also by Maimir when it's the same result whether he did a Maimir or not? But how do you tell him Maimir? You know why he says Maimir? For different reasons altogether. La Fuke This comes to negate the opinion of Meshamai. Because Meshamai is of the opinion that you don't have to wait for Bia to make her your wife. Meshamai holds if you gave her Kedushin, she's your wife, Mahat So according to Meshamai, if, if Shima would have given Kedushin uh, to Reuben's wife, then this woman now is totally Shima's wife. And if it's totally uh, Shima's wife, then the co wife not only cannot marry Levi, she cannot, doesn't even need Chalitza. Because she's the co wife, Mahatayda, of someone that's forbidden to Levi. That's why the Mishnah says, also, remind me to tell you that no, Shama is wrong, it's only Midrabbana. Therefore, Shimon's other wife at least needs Chalitza. He says, My Makoina, can you come? Kamashlan, that's not so. One more thing. Aisve, Abai, Abai asked a question. Shleachim, Ba'ilam, Echod, 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 Echod,